Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, April 19th, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. It's been an amazing evening. Just got back from an archaeoastronomy talk by Ron Sutcliffe on the 18.6 year lunar standstill at Chimney Rock. And we've been watching M flare after M flare, and now an X 2.2 kicking off from the sun. And that's not even the big story. April snowstorm turns northeast into a winter wonderland. A major winter like storm upended, unloaded 18 inches of snow in some parts of the interior northeast. Shut up, Al. Get in your home. Keep calm. It is boom time. A major winter storm. Unloaded up to 18 inches of snow in some parts of the interior northeast and set up new April snowfall records in Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and elsewhere. The storm system unleashed heavy rains that caused flooding, and at least one fatality was blamed on this wintry weather system. And where is the mainstream as we talk about this? New storm totals for the record-breaking upstate New York storm. One spot got 18 inches. Well, that's a whopper of a storm in Syracuse, let alone one in April. The most snow, 18 inches, fell in southern Cortland County of Virgil. In second place with 16.3 inches was another central New York spot, the village of Erieville in Madison County. And those are just some of the highlights of the record totals. Deja vu, blizzard conditions and severe weather in the forecast for the central U.S. Holy macaroni. Now, blizzard doesn't necessarily mean deep snow. It means heavy blowing snow, which is very bad for young animals, especially in the spring. Gang, gang. This looks nothing like spring, more like a January picture. But it is deja vu. In fact, there is severe weather. Now, let's take a look at the snowfall totals. In the northeast, like a beast. Here, we're looking, well, that we just blew that up a little too much. And there is quite a significant amount as of this morning. Now, this is moving up to the north. Maine is completely covered now. But as of 6 a.m. this morning, there was a foot of snow up here between the Catskills and the Adirondacks. The Adirondacks probably now buried. There was 8 to 10 inches in some areas of Vermont this morning and 6 to 8 inches in the southern mountains of the Appalachians here in West Virginia, snowshoe. So these numbers are much higher currently, but we just don't have the data. Unsettled in the northwest, fire weather conditions in the southwest, storms in the plains. As the system moves onshore in the northwest, high elevation snow and low elevation rain and storms will be likely. Dry, warm conditions and gusty winds result in an elevated critical fire weather threat from the southwest into the high plains. Isolated severe thunderstorms will be possible across eastern Oklahoma Wednesday. And take a look at the frost and freeze warnings all the way down to South Kakalaki. So click on your county. For more information at weather.gov, links will be below. Now power has been kicked off and up to 300,000 people were out without power earlier today with this nor'easter. And it is still pummeling New York State, 140,000 without power in New York, just under 30,000 in PA. And that's about it. This will be moving up the coast. So Maine will have power outages in the morning. That is our prognosis. Seismic update. Some quakes of note, we have moderate uptick in moderate earthquakes worldwide, especially in the Philippines region where there is multiple aftershocks and four shocks for another quake in this region. We've had some lot echoes kick in after the initial 6.1 and now 56 kilometers, 70 kilometers, 80 kilometers. We could be waiting for something coming up on the surface much larger than 5.0. So we're looking maybe at a 6 or 7 magnitude here in this particular region in Indonesia or in the Philippines. But we also have some seismic unrest. Now let's take a look at that. Karimshki volcano in the Camp Chok, a powerful explosion today. Over 10,000 feet and quite unexpected. A vigorous volcano uh, eruption occurred from the summit volcano today. And take a look at that spectacular footage. We do have 
visuals of the ash cloud from that aerial and it moves hundreds of miles all the way to the coast coast with the most so that was quite a big explosion today from Karimshki. now Ruapehu volcano in New Zealand the crater lake temperature has cooled a bit but strong tremor continues so this might not just be a heating event take a look at the slate gray cover color of that lake Oh, holy macaroni. They always want us to donate, don't they? The volcanic unrest continues to be elevated over the past week at Rua, Pehu. The ongoing strong tremor is considered the longest lived tremor over the past 20 years. So there's that. And the crater lake, Tiwamo, temperature has decreased just one degree C since the last measurement, but stable levels continue to keep an average 37 degrees C. The this slowing of the heating, in spite of the ongoing strong level of volcanic tremor, continues to indicate heightened volcanic unrest as the pressure could be building up at depth. The crater lake remains a battleship gray color with upwellings only at the northern vents area with no overflow. So, we're keeping a close eye on Ruapehu for a potential VEI-23 explosion in the coming days. Now, Manam Volcano, we reported on this eruption with ash cloud to 45,000 feet. The residuals are still being reported from the same huge ash bloom from the volcano that rose 13.7 kilometers. No satellite image nor webcam picture has been published so far as yet. So they're now claiming there could be a second puff happening today but i looked at himawari and there is no evidence of that so there is evidence of an x flare happening just moments ago and it is still ongoing so let's refresh this it's now dropped down into m range but this was an x 2.2 and we don't have any information because it just happened so won't be able to tell you there is a little radio blackout happening now and it has dropped off so it's a short-lived event and we can probably run you through here some of the events from these sunspot areas. This is where we've had M flare activity here and here, where this huge sunspot array that is going to be turning around to face us for 10 days straight. Well, it's going to be the big creator of the space weather. And I believe the X flare is coming from right here, right there. Let's go look at it again. There. That was the X flare. In my opinion, now let's come over here to 193 angstroms. And let's watch for that X flare to come right at the end of the array here. So you have M flare and then hard to see there. Yeah, so... Much better visual here. And we'll just, boom, right there. That light. Let's see if we can pause that. Trying to get that little. Really? Can't. Oh, that was about to show it right there. What was that? There's one screen where everything goes a little funny. There it is. So that's the X flare right there in question, I believe, happening right there on the southern spot. That's the active region in question is 2994. Let's take a look real quick. Let's look at the sunspot progression. It's not even on here. We can't even, I can't even see the summer. summer. Here, there it is. So what we're looking at is it coming from AR2994. X1.1 is now an X1.2. X2.2. Let's just confirm that. X2.2. That was the maximum flux from this X flare. And so that's what we're looking at now. An additional event, AR2994 X2.2. So the second event, we still have 10 more days of this sunspot to pass in front of Earth. So, whew, holy macaroni. 
We're going to be keeping a close eye on that sunspot, all right, won't we? Now, if you missed it, <clears throat> we did a video last night on the three-legged crow. Uh, and the three-legged crow video is, well, fascinating connection between mythology and science. So go check that out. Uh, there will be a link at the end of the video to get you there. Now, here we are looking at the current position of the three-legged crow, and it's quite a big sunspot array. Some spe people are claiming this is one sunspot, but that couldn't be further from the truth. It's clearly one, two, three, trailing with a fourth spot here. And this is going to be moving across the front of the disk here. Now, these could all merge. If they get a little bigger, they could actually be magnetically connected, all three of them. Well, and then that means bigger booms, like... Currently, 25% X-flare, and we've already had an X2.2, and we have a week and a half of these sunspots passing in front of us. So, all is quiet on the western front currently, but that 2.2 is going to be potentially coming at us. More information in the morning. Check out Magnetic Reversal News for the CME update. Now, Judah Kuya, Rock, Cherokee, Petroglyph of Prominence. We did a little uh, expose of this a few uh, weeks ago on magnetic reversal news, but I want to bring your attention to another rock that is quite similar, and that is the mysterious Concho Stone. Now, the Concho Stone is located in Scotland and was discovered in 1887. Well, and it is remarkably similar to the Judicoya Rock. Same shape and size. It's almost bizarre. And the dots. Take a look at all the dots. And the lines, nothing but dots and lines, occasional plasma petroglyph, but I believe these are depicting very similar events in the night sky. Now, before we close up tonight, we have some very special things going on in the San Luis Valley associated with the Crestone Energy Fair. So if you live in that region, please get involved in all the work leading up to the Crestone Energy Fair, August 27th and 28th, my birthday weekend. Now, the ongoing education series starting this month and next month is about Hugel culture and Gruben culture. And these are workshops led by Farmer Bob of Beyond Organica. Locally appropriate variations of these soil building and water conservation techniques will be explained and installed with several different applications modeled. You're looking at a hugel culture here, which is a raised version, and then the buried version of this is called the Grüben culture. Now, equipment will do the digging, lifting of logs and soil moving, yet still lots of hands-on opportunities exist. Now, May 7th and 8th, there will be a presentation in the Baca Grande. This is in Cresta. From 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. both days, Donations suggested, but if you're poor, you don't have to pay. It includes lunch both days, so you might as well buck up for that. On-site camping, potluck dinner, Saturday night. So head out there May 7th and 8th for an awesome festival where it's it's a learning workshop where you're going to learn about hugo culture and gluten culture. Not only that, you'll be community building. And then if you're closer to Salida instead of Crestone, well, then May 14th might be the workshop for you. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Topics include Gruben culture, water storage for irrigated farmland, tree, wind and break, and food and garden. So two events coming in the ongoing education series for the Crestone Energy Fair. So if you're in that area, please get involved. We need people to get involved to make this a success. And it's on you now. If you're in that area, be there. Be square. That's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents best part performance. As the sun ramps up, we head into the solar max of cycle 25. It is our supposition for the last eight years that 2023 will be the end of the empire. And this is a grid down scenario. So prepare now and survive and thrive later. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe. Just a few more weeks. Before Squatterman 2022 in the desert of Rui del Sol, New Mexico. Get your tickets now before they're all gone. That's a boom. We love you. Mm.